Hello, everyone. My name is Joseph Sulia, and I will be reading for you Table 41, which is my novel. I will be reading Table 15. <laughs> table 15. Astride on the back of the mountain goat is a young boy. The young boy is wearing green swimming trunks, a green baseball cap, and a green t-shirt that reads, MILF, man, I love fishing. Riding with such vehemence that he threatens to capsize the animal that he is riding. The young boy clutches the pointed horns of the mountain goat simulating the movements and the posture of a jockey. He is laughing cascadingly. The mountain goat is being ridden by the young boy. Losing interest in the boy and the goat, you follow with your eyes the flight of the antelope. Their jumping yet fluid gait as they jump up and down across Clark Street. Watch the steady glide of the antelope as they shift past your line of vision. The antelope are succeeded by a flock of sheep. Here come the sheep. Watch the springing gait of the bovids, the hopping, herded, Sheep, big-eyed, black-eyed, swift-footed, spindle-legged gazelles speed away, dodging the truck that is rolling down Clark Street. Their lyre-shaped horns are speeding past you. They, the horns, buck and rock, jerk and jink. Men and women are lying in the street. The springing gazelles dive over the heads of the prostrate humans. Hopping and stodding, the gazelles bounce into the hardware store. Your entire body is vibrating and repelled by the spectacle that unfolds before you. You are wafting past the urban outfitters. You can hardly believe your eyes. You can hardly believe your eyes. There standing before the urban outfitters is an Arabian oryx, perhaps the most beautiful creature that you have ever seen. A noble antelope with straight, impossibly long horns, with a stately bearing, with staunch haunches, with a brushy black tail, with an impeccably fashioned gray and black and white coat. The great herbivore stands there before you, staring at your half-closed eyelid curtains. A white-spotted deer leaps past you, glazed, with a sparkling glaze. Diving across the street, a wildebeest is thrashing its handlebar horns and grunting in short, loud bursts. Fingering their mobile telephones, the husbands, are texting their wives, and the wives are texting their husbands. Their teenaged children are twittering and reading the books of their faces. 50 feet ahead of you stands a caribou, its majestic head held aloft. Two young human children are stroking the caribou's hide as their father hoists them and their mother looks on indulgently. 
spluttering with glee, the children kiss and massage the hide of the caribou. Spluttering and sputtering, now they are kissing and massaging the fur of the alpaca, the alpaca that is standing behind the caribou. Happy water buck, prance along the side of the street, happily unaware as the supermarket goes up in flames. Vast herds of migratory wildebeest traverse the city as humans cower in what were once department stores and hair salons. The wildebeest trample and tramp over stalled automobiles, automobiles standing lifelessly in the middle of the street. Human beings signal to you as you pass the windows, gesturing for food and drink. There, a long tusked musk deer is suckling, giving milk to her fawn, giving milk to her fawn. There, a fawn's delicate head is pressed between her mother's hind legs, sucking and suckling the lactation device. The fawn gently scrapes her mother's hind legs with a forehoof. The small deer is vibrating with hunger. The mother musk deer is motionless, placid, as if stuffed, as if she were a stuffed milk dispensing machine with inscrutable factory settings. The musk deer has pointed black, shiny hooves, a curved back, gigantic hindquarters, and the ears of a rabbit. It has fang-like tusks and musk glands. Let me say that again. It has fang-like tusks and musk glands beneath its legs that secrete a viscous yellow sap. The musk deer gives its milk to the fawn. The milk deer gives you a deep, lugubrious look. And then come the impala, the beautiful impala, the impala are brownly beautiful. The Impala are succeeded by galloping hartebeest with their fawn colored hides and lyre shaped horns. They make a gorgeous sight streaming into the TJ Maxx in a yellow chestnut haze. Their hooves are clicking along. Their vivacious gait invigorates you. The animals zoom into your field of vision and then recede just as suddenly beside you bounces a lime Hyundai. The passenger door nearly shaves your left flank as it sharks forward. The motorist is a man with a black beard and a black mullet. The motorist reels down the driver's side window and asks with a self-inflicted sting of self-denigration, if you would like to come inside, you say nothing. The car speeds ahead and then swerves to the right and slithers off the road and on to the pavement. Its doors pop open and out comes the man with the black beard and the black mullet. 
he glances at you with eyes that seem to want to turn away. He pulls a leather jacket over his arms. A tremendous chin, a tremendous chin gives his face the shape of a pear. A rifle is slung indifferently over his right shoulder. A red-headed woman in a sequined lizard-scaled green dress flounces toward him in all of her sparkling raiment. She is glamorously ridiculous and ridiculously glamorous. Fixed in a reverie, she wafts down the street toward the man with the black beard and the black mullet. The red-headed woman kisses the man with the black beard and the black mullet. He does not appear to want to be kissed. You hear a crash. You hear a crashing. You hear the mindless, hollow, smacking sounds of rams, ramming car doors. Sprinting rams collide with the line of cars along the perimeter of the street. The rams are batter ramming the lime Hyundai. To the left, you watch one car twisting over itself and wonder if there is anyone inside. So again, that was table 15. My name is Joseph Sulia, S-U-G-L-I-A. The novel from which I was reading is my novel, Table 41, which was published in its definitive version, in its final version, in January of 2019. If you would like to purchase a copy of the book, you may do so on Amazon, amazon.com, or on any of its affiliates. If you would rather not, that is fine with me. Fine with me if you'd rather not purchase a physical copy, although it is also available on Kindle, and it's actually selling on Kindle for some reason. People seem more interested in reading digital editions of books than touching tactile books. I'm not one of them. I prefer physical book. I prefer the physicality of the book. But if you would rather not purchase the book, or if you'd rather not read it for free online at Kindle Unlimited, it is free if you have Kindle Unlimited. That's fine, but I would ask you to continue to listen to me read the novel. If you don't want to read the novel, fine, but listen to the novel. I invite you to listen to the novel. I hope that you'll at least listen to the novel. Thank you very much. There are 41 chapters in this book. This was table 15. This is Joseph Sulia signing out and signing off. Thank you.